A critical part of Blacksmith 3D Suite's workflow is the Hot Selection feature, which allows you to select portions of the surface with varying strengths. In other programs, they might be referred to as soft selections, but we refer to them as hot selections, just to keep in tune with the blacksmith analogy. By default, the hot selection will appear for a short period of time after a selection has been made, and it is then replaced with a dotted marquee line. This is to allow the user to properly see the texture below the selection. However, there will be times when you may wish to keep the hot selection visible continuously. To achieve this, select the hot selection view from the display mode of the viewport's menu. Since you may be using this option often, it is more convenient to use the shift space hotkey to toggle it on or off. Hot selections can be used to accomplish a variety of tasks in Blacksmith 3D Suite. They can be used to isolate and paint a portion of the surface like this. You can also organically deform models for creating morph targets. You can see more about creating morph targets, or blend shapes, in another tutorial. Also, when using the Paint Setup Wizard to auto-UV map a model, you can select portions of the surface to be mapped separately, for various levels of resolution. Now that you know a few of the things that selections are used for, let's take a closer look at the selection tools and how to use them. Picker Tool. Let us start off by introducing the Picker Selection Tool. This tool allows you to select whole sections of the model based on the Type option. First, let us switch to Polygon Selection Mode, since it's more appropriate for what we're about to do. To select the entire object, select the Type to Object, and then click on any portion of the surface. Also, please note how not only has the whole object been selected in the viewport, it's also been highlighted in the manager. This is especially useful when you have several objects in the scene and you want to locate the one you want. Now choose the material type and click on any portion of the surface. Notice how all the polygons belonging to the material are selected in the viewport again and how the material is highlighted in the manager. For this type we have the additional option for pop-up material window. When this option is checked, we can click on the material in the viewport and the material editor pops up as well, allowing you to see or change the maps that are applied to each channel and set their respective colors and strengths. At some point, you may want to select all of the polygons that have a specific map applied to them. To do so, choose the map type and simply click on any polygon in the viewport that has the desired map applied. Again, notice how the map becomes highlighted in the map section. This is especially useful when your model contains several maps and locating the appropriate one may not be obvious. Our next type to consider is Group. Select the Group type and click on any polygon in the viewport. As expected, all the polygons belong to that group are selected and also the group is highlighted in the manager. Finally, we have the Element type. An element is a chunk of the model that is connected by vertices and polygons. Some elements are completely separate from the rest of the model. For a character, it is very common for the eyeballs to be separate elements, so let us select one now. Box Select. Now let us take a close look at the Box Select tool. Click on the icon, and then drag out a box on the surface of the model. Now notice how the selection is reddish closer to the edges of the box, and yellow in the center. This means that the red vertices have a smaller selection value than the yellow ones. Drawing upon the analogy of a blacksmith, the yellow part is hotter, while the red part is less hot, and the bluish gray part is cold. Before we go any further, let me show you what this means. If we were to now paint on the selection, we would see that more paint is applied to the hot area, while less to the warm, and none to the cold. Likewise, if you're deforming the model, then the hotter parts are deformed more, while the warmer parts are deformed less, and the cold parts are unaffected. Like the painting tools, we can adjust the strength and hardness of the selection. Setting the strength to 50%, we'll notice that the selection peaks at the color red. Setting the strength back to 100% and the hardness to 100%, we'll notice that the selection is either completely hot or completely cold with nothing in between. Think of the hardness as being similar to the feathering in 2D paint applications. Lasso Select. The Lasso Selection tool behaves the same way as the Box Selection tool, except allows you to trace out a path around the area that you want to select. Selection Brush. The Selection Brush allows you to paint a selection on the model in a similar way that you might paint on a texture. 
Please note the extra size parameter, which of course determines the size of the brush as it appears in the viewport. Also, please note that the selection brush uses the brush shape, which can be changed by clicking on the shape box in the bottom left corner of the interface. Let us now take a moment to illustrate how to edit a current selection. The single most common selection edit you'll find yourself using is Soften. So choose Soften from the Select section of the Edit menu, or better yet, press the S hotkey. Notice how the transition between hot and cold becomes more gradual. Pressing the S key several times can make the selection extra soft, and notice how it spreads out. Now, if you hold the shift key while pressing S, you'll see that the selection softens outward, preventing the hotter portions from becoming cooler. Alternatively, if you hold the alt key while pressing S, it prevents the selection from spreading, subsequently cooling the hotter portions more rapidly. Choosing the harden option from the same menu, or better yet, using the N hot key, allows you to harden the selection so it becomes either hot or cold with no gradient in between. Again, you can modify this behavior by holding the Alt key and pressing N so it only partially hardens the selection. Keep pressing the Alt N key until the desired selection has been achieved. Please note the additional options such as Grow, Shrink, and Invert which I'll let you try it on your own. When a selection becomes too weak, perhaps the result of excessive softening, then you may wish to normalize it, which scales it such that the hotter portion is scaled to become 100%. Let us now discuss how to combine multiple selections together. In Blacksmith 3D Suite, the selection workflow is very similar to the standard 2D painting applications that you may be used to. After making a selection, if you wish to add to the selection, simply hold the Shift key while selecting and the new selection will be added to the old. To subtract the new selection from the old, hold the ALT key while selecting. You can select everything using the Control a hotkey, and you can clear the selection by using the Control u hotkey. Let us now get back to the remaining selection tools. The Selection Touch-Up brush allows you to modify portions of the selection by painting over it. The Type to parameter determines how the selection will be modified. You can soften, harden, grow, and shrink your selections. The random type allows you to select with random strengths, which is great for making bumpy morphs or uneven paint distributions. Usually you would follow a random selection with a quick press of the S hot key to soften it out a bit. For special cases, you may want to select the open vertices, which are those that are not completely surrounded by polygons. In a similar way, you can also select the vertices which have open texture seams. The sharp type uh, selects points that have a bit of steeper surface angle than those that are smooth or flat. Similarly, the artifacts type selects sharp points, but only those that have become sharp as a result of the current morph targets that are applied. This is a great tool for quickly smoothing up bunched up geometry that has occurred after morphing, so it can be smoothed out. Now, if you have made a selection that you like to save for future use, choose the Create Selection Preset from the Select menu, give it a unique name, and then click on OK. The selection will now appear in the Manager window under the Selection section. Please note that the selection need not be limited to a single object. If you have several objects loaded in the scene, then the selection for all of them will be stored in this preset. Clearing the selection using the Control u hotkey, we can now reapply the selection by right-clicking on it and click on Apply Selections. Alternatively, we can simply double-click on it. You now have the basic knowledge required for creating and manipulating selections in Blacksmith 3D Suite. By utilizing selections, you will have precise control of where your paint is distributed and how your models are morphed. This two-step process, that is, select and then morph, or select and then paint, may seem cumbersome at first, but rest assured it will give you the precise control required for professional results.